Good evening, and thanks for joining us for the departure of the Soyuz MS-15 spacecraft and its three inhabitants, NASA astronauts Andrew Morgan, Jessica Mir, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Skripochka. Having conducted meticulous system checks, including leak checks on the hatch and depressurizing the space between the vehicle and the station, the crewmates are now in their Sokol launch and entry suits and strapped into their seats, one step closer to coming home. I'm NASA's Leah Cheshire, and I'm here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where the Orbit 3 team is currently on console, monitoring all of the systems aboard the International Space Station. Leading teams tonight is Flight Director Marcos Flores, down at the bottom of your screen, and to his right, Capcom Andreas Mogensen, who's communicating with the astronauts aboard the station. Visiting Vehicle Officer Mike Campion is keeping tabs on the Soyuz vehicle, preparing to depart here in just about 22 minutes. This is a balcony view of the Russian Mission Control Center in Kordyov, a town outside of Moscow. That is the team that will be controlling all of tonight's landing operations. You'll hear this team refer to the Soyuz crew as Sarmat, the call sign chosen by Oleg Skropochka, commander of the Soyuz MS-15 spacecraft, whenever MCC Moscow addresses the crew. I can see the image on the Moltes. Yes, copy, and on the laptop. Inaudible. On MPEG viewer, on the laptop, I see something gray. Standing by uh, with the commands V17 uh, approach flag and also RUO approach. Uh, do not send this command yet. V18 is also should not be sent. Uh, but um, as to video servers, it's all black. Cannot see anything. Copy. But I'm done with step five. Everything is correct for step five. Copy. You can hear Commander Oleg Skropochka speaking with teams on the ground, continuing those checks in preparation for the Soyuz to undock from the Zvezda portion of the space station, scheduled for 8.53 p.m. Central Time. Tonight, the teams in the Russian Mission Control Center on your screen, as well as here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, are fully focused on the departure of the Soyuz MS-15 spacecraft, with Jessica Mir, Andrew Morgan, and Oleg Skropochka inside. Drew Morgan's 272-day mission began on July 20th, 2019, the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. He launched aboard the Soyuz MS-13 spacecraft, along with Luca Parmitano of the European Space Agency and Alexander Skvortsov of Roscosmos. During his journey, he traveled over 115.3 million miles orbiting Earth and also contributed to hundreds of experiments in biology, Earth science, human research, and more. During his time on board, he conducted seven spacewalks, totaling 45 hours and 48 minutes, four of which were dedicated to improving and extending the life of the station's alpha magnetic spectrometer as it looks into the universe for evidence of dark matter. He's now got the record for the fourth long individual spaceflight for an American with those 272 days on his first mission. Using the uh, and uh, using camera. The next uh, order minus 104-4400. Jessica Mir and Oleg Skripochka, who launched on the Soyuz MS-15 spacecraft departing tonight, arrived on September 25, 2019. They traveled over 86.9 million miles during their stay aboard the International Space Station. And for Mir, it was her first space flight, conducting the first three all-woman spacewalks with NASA astronaut Christina Cook, totaling 21 hours and 44 minutes outside the hatch. Skropochka is completing his third space flight for a cumulative 536 days in orbit.
We confirm Sudan power. Yes, uh, Dina Sudi, we are three of them. No, we copy. We copy. TVS. TVS. Go. Go. Inaudible. Taking a look, it was a very busy time for the International Space Station during the expedition on which these crew members were on board. We saw three arrivals of SpaceX Dragon cargo craft, two of the Russian Progress resupply craft, and two Northrop Grumman Cygnus spacecraft. Additionally, there was an uncrewed Soyuz that visited the space station and two Soyuz spacecraft that brought crews along with them. There was also the arrival of the Japanese HTV cargo vehicle. A very busy time and a lot of traffic aboard the International Space Station. Ivan, first step 3.3, three, please check. Zero 04, we have prime command 17. We're supposed to have an image by now. Earlier this evening, Morgan, Mir, and Skripochka, which you can see on your screen, Andrew Morgan there on the left, Oleg Skripochka, commander of the Soyuz MS-15 in the middle, and Jessica Mir on the right, said goodbye to their crewmates. Uh, you can see Skripochka hugging Chris Cassidy, the new commander of the International Space Station, who will stay behind to live and work on the station, along with Anatoly Evanishin, also there in the center of your screen, and uh, just off camera, um, joined by Ivan Wagner. This marks the end of the mission for uh, Mir, Morgan, and Skripochka. As we mentioned, an almost nine-month mission for Morgan and six months for Mir and Skripochka. The crew floated into the Soyuz MS-15, Jessica Mir going in first, who will be the left seat as board engineer one, and Drew Morgan in the right seat as board engineer two, followed by commander of the spacecraft, Oleg Skripochka. In the diagram, they are all mated. Copy. The Soyuz hatch was closed at 5.44 p.m. Central Time, 6.44 p.m. Eastern Time, as the space station was flying 262 statute miles northeast of Japan. Since then, the crew has been performing leak checks and systems checks, ensuring their Soyuz is ready to go. They then depressurized the space in between the Soyuz hatch and the Zvezda service module hatch on the space station, bringing that down to a vacuum for their departure. In the past few hours, they've also donned their white Sokol launch and entry suits, and they're now strapped into their Soyuz at the aft port of the Zvezda module, ready for their journey home. Yes, we can see it. So you have USB 2A. Copy. Since the closure of this hatch earlier, we mentioned some of those systems and uh, vehicle checks that have been performed. And there have also uh, the port hooks on the Zvezda service module aft are now open, setting the stage for the undocking command to be sent to the Soyuz. And with the crew of three tucked safely away in the Soyuz in their seats, that undocking command is scheduled to be sent at 8.52 p.m. Central Time. Ground one for Ivan. Go ahead. 
Ну, есть предложение сначала отключить that you restart the application for step 11 and then do step 5 again and do the activation for step 5. And uh, first I use um, step 11.2, close the video server. And then step five, reactivate everything. Copy. Once that undocking command is sent at 8.52 p.m. Central Time, springs on both sides of the docking interface between the docking port itself and Soyuz will push off against each other to allow physical separation of Soyuz from the space station. It'll take about 90 seconds until we see any actual movement from the spacecraft, so undocking itself is scheduled for 8.53 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time. And this is on USOS, so we'll be standing by for instructions from them. And let's continue working on our task. Once the Soyuz departs from the space station, it'll be moving at about 1.12 meters per second. And about three minutes after separation, there will be an eight second burn, adding 0.53 meters per second to the Soyuz velocity. So we'll be on the lookout for that separation burn one. That will carry it far enough away from the station, approximately 32 kilometers or 19 miles, for it to later execute the deorbit burn, scheduled for 11.22 p.m. and lasting four minutes and 41 seconds. That deorbit burn is a retrograde firing It's easiest to understand as a braking maneuver, and it'll slow the spacecraft down by about 128 meters per second, allowing it to fall out of orbit, which is exactly what we want to see this evening. The Soyuz should still have communication with the space station until just after that deorbit burn when it enters the plasma regime. Station Houston on space to ground two for Chris and the caution warning. Hey Chris, uh, let's go over to space to ground one if you can, just so we don't uh, interfere with Soyuz. Oh, one. Hey, Chris, just wanted to let you know that the uh, enabled warning that came up on the board, we, we don't have any actions for you at the moment for this. And we're still go for undock. Okay, copy. Yeah. I confirm. Close the transmission. We copy. And I confirm display plus TV is on. And uh, please issue RDR 44500. Zero zero. This evening's return to Earth for the Expedition 63 crew will be for the Expedition 62 crew will begin with the undocking at 8:53 p.m. Central Time, just a few minutes from now. Springs on both sides of the docking interface will push off against each other to allow physical separation. The deorbit burn will be scheduled for 11:22 p.m. Central Time. This retrograde burn will slow the Soyuz spacecraft by 128 meters per second, enough to drop it out of Earth's orbit. At 11.50 p.m., the three portions of the Soyuz module will pyrotechnically separate, leaving the orbital module and propulsion module to burn up in the atmosphere, while the descent module you see here with its three crew members will have its heat shield forward to the direction of travel, protecting them from 
the heat buildup reaching about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. After the crew is out of the plasma regime, a series of parachutes will open, first two pilot parachutes and then a drogue chute, followed by the main chutes that will guide the spacecraft down in a 15-minute descent. Just about two seconds before the crew touches on, down on the ground on the step of Kazakhstan, about 92 miles southeast of the town of Jeskazgan, there will be a soft landing engine fire. That will slow that down the Soyuz just a bit more, preparing them for that landing. Inaudible. And we confirm that we can issue the ECAV inhibit command. We copy. We are in the, in the indicator mode. Uh, we still do not have GSO attitude built. Please issue R7 uh, command on the display number 3 and then activate uh, the headlamp. In work. Just about five minutes away from that undock command being sent to the vehicle. Once again, it'll take about 90 seconds for us to see the physical separation of Soyuz on its journey home to the International Space Station. At the top of your screen is actually a progress resupply vehicle, just one of the several vehicles that caused so much traffic during these recent expeditions. And I sent this command once. We copy. Sure. This is a good look at where the Soyuz MS-15 is right now. You can see that progress at the bottom of your screen, which you just had a clear view of uh, live in real time from the space station. That Soyuz MS-15 is docked to the aft port of the Zvezda module. We copy. We are awaiting that undocking command to be sent in just a few moments from now. Moscow station. Upon its departure, MS-15 will leave behind the Soyuz MS-16 module, or um, Soyuz spacecraft. That's nominal. Thank you. I am ready with D-7. S-16 is not illuminated. This is our view from the Soyuz MS-15 spacecraft. We'll be watching here as that docking, undocking command is sent just a few minutes from now. And we'll be looking to see that separation at 8.53 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time. Moscow Station, Space and Ground 1, go ahead. First step 8. I'm, I'm activating recording, copy.
экипажем КС по Москву в канале СГ-1 для Ивана. Station Moscow, Space to Ground One for Ivan. Go ahead. Запись на вьюер включаем. We can start recording on the viewer. And in just 60 seconds, we can expect Jessica Mir to send that undocking command. And this is step 8.1. Activate recording and I send mode this seven the viewer. command in work. We confirm. Uh, Docking mechanism is powered up. Things proceeding smoothly. Retracted. S13. We have recording. And mechanical connection command is also confirmed. Copy. We copy. We give you a go to uh, send the 17 command. There is no open. image. Copy, thank you. So let's At 452, we'll put it in work. Then. Copy. Dear 17, are you ready? I copy. Ready. Sent. The command has been sent, and we will now wait for that visible undocking scheduled at 8.53 and 30 seconds Central Time. We can affirm S14. LED is no longer illuminated. And please monitor the docking mechanism for any debris during the undocking process. And we're currently in a satellite handover as we await to regain communications. I confirm mechanical connection is no longer illuminated at 4.53.15. And we confirm that um, there is... And we have undocking of the Soyuz MS-15 spacecraft at 8.53 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time as the space station flew 263 statute miles over eastern Mongolia. Soyuz MS-15 and its crew are flying free one step closer on their way back home to Earth. I do not see any FOD any debris during separation there is nothing at the docking mechanism indicator mode is no longer illuminated of course copy we copy the soyuz is now moving away from the stay station at 0 0.12 meters per second One minute in. Just about two minutes until we see that separation burn one, the eight second burn to create the faster opening rate between Soyuz and the station.
Two minutes into autonomous flight, um, and I see the we see the ISS. This view of Soyuz backing away from the Zvezda module on the International Space Station, where it has been parked since September 25th. In about 30 seconds, we'll be looking for that separation burn one. And we confirm uh, there is activation ZKL. And you can see the separation burn has begun, that eight second burn, separating Soyuz from the International Space Station at a rate of 0.53 meters per second. And we confirm uh, we are moving on to step nine. And the burn is confirmed as nominal. There is some interference. We are sending EL-1 command. Copy. Uh, there is interference. E-1, should I send it? Yes, send E-1 command. And send a eleven command. And then D eight. And we see the LED is no longer illuminated. D eleven D D seventeen. We sent those commands. Almost five minutes since Soyuz undocked from the International Space Station. Now flying free with the crew of Jessica Mir, Andrew Morgan, and Oleg, Skrip Oleg Skripochka on board. I, I sent V-18 and S-18 commands. Copy. Sent. Great. And then D5, and then please put the hand controller in the neutral position, trans translational hand controller in neutral position. It's a shame we can't really see anything in the periscope. True. As Soyuz continues to back away from the space station, you can see that upper bulbous portion, that's the orbital module. It includes the rendezvous antennas and the docking probe uh, that was activated upon the undocking command being sent. The center section is where you'll find our crew members. That's the descent module. And they uh, are wearing their Sokol suits strapped into their designated seats, ready for the ride home. The segment also holds all the life support and the guidance navigation and control systems. The lower portion is the propulsion module where you see those uh, solar arrays that houses the engines and other instruments necessary to maneuver the Soyuz during activities like the deorbit burn scheduled to bring the crew down out of Earth's orbit tonight at 11.22 p.m. Central Time. The only portion of this spacecraft that will survive the heat of re-entry and with a parachuted landing will land on the steps of Kazakhstan at 12.16 a.m. Central Time is that center portion, the 
descent module where the crew is currently seated. How are you? Let me try. Check them again. I think one of them is not closed. There is one on my side. Sarmate, this is MCC Moscow. Please select Tehan line on in pool panel. Pasha, come again. Let's select on in pool two info display. Confirm in full display is open. And please select descent tab and let's compare what you've got there. Descent you mean? Yes. Tab for descent. I confirm it's open. All right, let's verify what you have in the RODF procedures and what you have on the display. Also, it's in the decimal code. Nine yeah, I was. A That's the first group. Where, where is that? Okay, I see it. These are SUS uh, settings. Coming up on 10 minutes since Soyuz undocked from the Zvezda module on the International Space Station, you can hear the crew working with teams on the ground at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov outside of Moscow as the International Space Station and the Soyuz MS-15 itself are flying over the North Pacific Ocean at 263 statute miles. In that descent module, the center module of the Soyuz spacecraft, you have Commander Oleg Skripochka in the middle seat. On his left, Jessica Mir, the board engineer one, sort of the backup to the Soyuz commander. And then on the right, Andrew Morgan returning to Earth after almost nine months aboard the International Space Station. You can turn off TV per page 44, and then please send GF4 command on the input panel too. All data on the info tab are the same. Thank you so much for your confirmation. Copy. And I confirm um, display TVS is up. You can go ahead and terminate recording. Your current view of the Soyuz MS-15 spacecraft is from the International Space Station itself. The next major milestone for Soyuz will be the deorbit burn, lasting 4 minutes and 41 seconds to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, a braking maneuver that will allow it to drop out of Earth's orbit and back into the atmosphere. Translation mode. At that point, Soyuz will be about 32 kilometers from the International Space Station, or 19 miles.
с Арматой. We are done with the undocking. GoPro. Activation is going to be at 6.10.00 before descent. And then for page 48, you can um, perform steps to prepare for the descent for that page. And before that, you don't need to do anything. We'll be standing by, ready to support. Page 48, step one, work prep. Copy. Sarmate, we still have calm. We are not going to be bothering you. Just get some rest and prepare for the next steps. If you have any questions or comments, please call us. Station north of the ground one for one. Go ahead. And I confirm KDU. TV is off, Ivan, and you are go to press with steps 9 and 10. And, um, and also inaudible. 11, 500. Decimal 2. Close out up. And so on. And we need to. Soyuz continues to move farther away from the space station, but still very high above the blue marble of Earth. It won't drop out of Earth's orbit until that deorbit burn scheduled for 11.22 p.m. this evening. You know, go ahead, issue it. Up, yep. Just about five minutes after the deorbit burn is completed tonight, the orbital module, that bulbous portion at the top of the Soyuz spacecraft, will be depressurized to a vacuum, setting up the systems for the pyrotechnic separation of the modules. That's good. The orbital module would depart at 0.82 meters per second, and the propulsion module at the bottom of the spacecraft will depart at 0.58 meters per second. While the center section, the descent module will have its heat shield exposed in the direction of travel, ablating the almost 2,500 degree Fahrenheit temperatures that build up around it. That protects our crew inside of Oleg Skripochka, Roscosmos cosmonaut and commander of this vehicle, seated in the center. Jessica Mir to his left as board engineer one, and Andrew Morgan to his right as board engineer two. Upon the landing of this crew tonight, about 92 miles southeast of Jeskazgan, Kazakhstan, the crew will return by Russian helicopters to the recovery staging city in Baikonur, Kazakhstan. That's about a two and a half hour ride where they will split up for the first time in six months. The NASA crew will then move to ground transportation for about a three hour ride to the airport in Kislorda, where they will board a Gulfstream plane and make their way back to the Ellington Field in Houston. Skripochka will board a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft in Baikonur to return to his home in Star City, Russia. The NASA and Russian landing team are now en route aboard their helicopters from Baikonur on the way to Jeskazgan, about a two and a half hour flight. They will refuel those helicopters once they arrive in Jeskazgan in preparation to depart that location once again 
about the same time as the deorbit burn occurs tonight. They'll then set out for the landing site about a 35 minute flight. These three crew members will be coming home to excellent weather, looking at around 61 degrees Fahrenheit at the landing site on the steppes of Kazakhstan with clear skies and a little wind from the southeast. Upon landing, the crew will be extracted from the spacecraft and placed into chairs to get their land legs back and regain their equilibrium after half a year for uh, Oleg, and Oleg and Mir to uh, experience gravity for the first time and then in Drew Morgan's case, nine months. Let's go station, space to ground one. Go ahead. The files are on OCA. Copy. Uh, what's the name of the folder? Video photo link from Moscow. Video. Downlink from Moscow. And the folder name is? Moscow Station, space to ground one. Go ahead. I just put the files on there. You want me to create a separate, a separate folders, a folder for those files? Yeah, usually we ask you to create a separate folder so we know uh, which folder contains uh, which files. Moving faster and further away from the International Space Station is Soyuz MS-15, thanks to that separation burn one that occurred three minutes after its undocking from the Zvezda port tonight. Ivan, um, are, are there several files or just one? There are two files. Two files. Yes, SSD 2 2020 01 50 51 MPEG. And the second one is the SST two decimal twenty twenty zero four seventeen zero two uh zero three thirty seven. Copy, thank you. This view coming live from the International Space Station. And though Soyuz continues to move farther away from the station, we still have communications with the spacecraft. That won't be lost until just a little bit after the deorbit burn as the crew enters the plasma regime. When Temperatures of about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit will build up around the descent module, being ablated by the heat shield and protecting the crew of Jessica Mir, Alex Kropochka, and Andrew Morgan inside. And all systems were nominal during the undocking tonight. Things moving smoothly for Soyuz as it continues back toward Earth, returning three of its residents. 
Soyuz landing tonight is expected at 12.16 a.m. Central Time, actually on April 17th, and 1.16 uh, a.m. Eastern Time at 47.19 degrees north latitude, 69.34 degrees east longitude. That puts the spacecraft about 92 miles away from the town of Jezkazgan. Moscow Station. Moscow Station. Moscow Station. Base to ground one. The pictures of the docking interface are in folder um, Soyuz um, 744 and um, the uh, interface looks uh, very clean and pristine, uh, no damages or faults. And uh, Anatoly, we copy that. And um, uh, you are go to switch the position. Можно переводить КВД ПРКТК в положение. Position of ПРКТК. Uh, PEV in closed position. Copy. Closing KVD. PRKTK. Copy. And since the Soyuz MS-15 undocked at 8.53 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time while the station was flying over eastern Mongolia, it is now on its journey home. The next step for Soyuz will be the deorbit burn scheduled for 11.22 p.m. Central Time, and we'll be live on air to show you that at 11 p.m. Central Time, so please join us. 12.16 a.m. Central Time tomorrow, April 17th, is the projected landing time for Soyuz in south of Jeskazgan, Kazakhstan, about 92 miles away. In the meantime, the prime NASA crew has arrived by helicopter to Jeskazgan, Kazakhstan. The next steps for them to have their helicopters refueled in preparation to depart for the landing site at about the same time as that deorbit burn at 11.22 p.m. Central Time. We're going to take a quick break and come back at 11 p.m. Central. We hope that you'll join us for the landing of this crew with Oleg Skripochka, Jessica Mir, and Andrew Morgan. Thanks for joining us. This is Mission Control Houston. Thank <laughs> you. 